Well, good morning. Welcome back to the Broadcast Retirement Network. I'm Jeff Snyder. This is BRNAM for Thursday, March 3rd, 2022. And our top story today, where U.S. investors stand on ESG investing. Joining me now to discuss this and a lot more is Lydia Saad. She's director of social research for Gallup. Lydia, it's great to see you again. Thanks so much for joining us on the program this morning. Thank you. And we're talking ESG investing and what investors think. And, and you know, to kind of start things off, you and the team at Gallup did a lot of research on this. You want to give us the baseline number of uh, survey respondents, uh, the dates, all that kind of good stuff? Yes. Yeah, so we're going to talk about our, our fourth quarter poll from 2021. It was conducted in uh, mid-November. And we interviewed uh, enough Americans to get uh, just close to 1,000 national adults who meet our criteria of investors, which is having at least $10,000 uh, in stocks, bonds, mutual funds, either within or outside a you know, retirement account. Okay, so it's a good it's a good pool of people. I mean, it, it it covers all different types of investors. And and Lydia, as you know, I mean, this is this has been a hot topic not just for 2021. It's it's been this this ESG or sustainable conversations been going on for a while. A little bit more favorable under the, the the present administration. They're actually issuing some executive orders, and the Department of Labor's issuing some guidance around ESG. But it seems as though investors they favor it, at least looking at the research, they favor ESG, but few actually do it. That's right. And um, I don't mean any of this to minimize ESG or the importance of it or really the importance to investors, but what we've seen time and again, because we've been pulling on it pretty frequently for two years now, because we know it's in the news. We know uh, the investment community is talking about it and wanted to know, well, what does the average investor think about this? And um, uh, so they're just not that aware of it, really, is what it comes down to. Um, I, I, yeah. I'm sorry. Go finish your thought. Yeah, they're just they're just not aware of it. Is is the basic point that in our data, um, and we'll get into it when we talk. But they're they're interested in the concepts. It's, uh, at least the majority are, if not all of them, are interested in pursuing ESG goals with their investments. But as I said, they they haven't thought about it. it hasn't occurred to them. And we also know from other research that we've done that, you know, investing is hard. Most people, huh. you know, are told to set it and forget it. Most people have a 401k with a, maybe a target date fund. You know, they're really yeah. not in there, with, you know, getting their hands dirty, changing their investments. So I think we have to be um, practical about what we, what, what's realistic for inv- the average investor to do. And, and, and to your point, uh, let's talk about communication for a second. And Obviously, there's a lot of talk in the industry. You and I are talking about it now. Consultants, advisors, uh, fiduciaries are talking about it. You know, we're in the midst of a, a horrific event happening in the Ukraine, and you see uh, divestment um, from Russian uh, sanctioned companies for many of America's pensions. But uh, do you think that there's just a lack of proper communication or education about what ESG means? It seems like to me, you know, it, there's lack of transparency right now. They're working on that. And it means different things to different people. Right. To some people, it's just kind of like do good investing. You know, I'm going to, if I'm going to put this money with a company, I want to make sure I put it with a company that represents my values, that's doing good in the world. And I don't want to put it with companies that I disagree with. And we've seen, we see that in the data, that, you know, investors uh, like, again, like the idea of putting the money to support good causes and don't want to put money. Uh, where they think it's doing harm. Um, but then there is this whole other layer of, um, you know, so for instance, corporate governance. I think that's probably very hard for the average investor to get their head around, but that actually can reduce risk, right? If you are investing with companies that have good corporate governance and transparency and good ethics, you're not going to end up with an Enron, you know, situation. Okay. So, um there's it is a whole range from being very altruistic to be very very selfish really about you know caring about these things when you're when you're making these ESG decisions. Yeah, I, I think people are are practical. Uh, at least the people that I have talked to about this particular issue when you're an investor. And by the way, they've got other things going on in their lives beyond just look. I, I think you talk to a, a person, they want to do good. As you said, they overwhelmingly want to do good. They don't want to hurt anybody else. Uh, they want to, you know, react positively when it comes to climate and 
and helping other people. But oftentimes, as you said, your own needs or what you perceive as your own needs get in the way sometimes of that. Sure. So yeah, they, investors have to weigh what's the best for my portfolio. And as we saw in the research, the number one thing that they're focused on when they when we say, what is it you, you know, spend time researching before you make an investment is the, you know, the, the outlook for, for gains, for profit, and the, uh, you know, the potential for risk. And then the rating of um, the ESG factors, whether a company is uh, you know, is doing environmental sustainable, sustainable things or socially responsible or good corporate governance. Well, that's kind of lowered down. Oh, they, you ask them about it, half say, yeah, that's important. But not, you know, 80, 90% are saying, you know, potential gains are more important. So that's that's the priority is they're, they, they're putting this money away for the retirement for the most part. And they, and they want to make sure they're making this, the, right, the right financial decisions. Now, if they can make good, if they can do good in the world at the same time, why not? And we've asked separately whether people think, whether investors think that ESG funds perform uh, better than, at par, or worse than the market average. And the majority think, oh, it's at, at, uh, on average with the, you know, with the market. So most don't see it as a liability to be investing in, you know, socially responsible funds. Um, but on on the margins, very few think they perform better, you've got maybe a quarter thinking they perform worse. So there is a little bit of a tail on that that might be slowing people down from moving into them. But most, I think, can be persuaded by an by a financial advisor or whoever that it makes sense to be in these funds because they're not going to harm, you know, do no harm. Lydia, I need to take a very quick break. When we come back, values are not nothing, but they're also not everything to investors, you're going to want to stay tuned right here on BRN AM. Imagine a new television network that will make you richer, healthier, and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. We want to make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? Especially for the smaller businesses. I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN, the Broadcast Retirement Network. Are you stuck with a low credit score? A credit report and score that's causing you to be denied credit or pay higher interest rates than others for the same things? Then do what Terrence did and call Credit Repair for your free credit evaluation to help restore your credit. I started thinking about buying a new house and my score wasn't where I needed it to be. I called and spoke with one of the representatives and we just had a good conversation and I, I liked what he was saying. Just one call for his free credit evaluation was all it took to start back on the track to repairing his credit. I'm seeing the deletions and I'm getting the report so I know something's being done. It does make a difference to me. All it takes is one call to get started. Credit repair has given me a second chance to have a better credit score. Don't let a low credit score hold you back another day. Do what Terrence did and make the call for your free credit evaluation. Call 800-819-4152. That's 800-819-4152. Again, 800-819-4152. Welcome back. We're talking this morning to Lydia Saad 
of Gallup. Lydia, thanks so much for staying with us this morning. This is fun. Yeah, I haven't chased off a guest, guest yet, but you know, there's always still an opportunity for you to hit exit on, on Zoom. All right, Lydia, it's International Women's Month, and Harry Belafonte saying the women are smarter. And I have to ask you, women are more likely to invest in, in, in accordance with their social values. I want to get your thoughts about that. So again, this is a different question where we asked investors how important various financial priorities or concepts are to them just in their in their life. So this ranged from everything from mantras like don't spend more than you earn and put money away for a safe rainy day to the kind of ESG values we're talking about. And for the most part, uh, men and women are similar in, in saying these values are important or not important to them. But the one where we, we saw a, a real gender difference was requiring that companies you invest in have a positive societal impact. So 35% of men investors said that was extremely or very important versus 50% of female investors. Um, so we also uh, had this other question requiring that companies you invest in are aligned with your values, women a little bit more than men to say that's extremely important. Yeah, at the, at the end of the day, does it really just come down to stock performance and how the fund or the ETF or how the particular investment does. I mean, if it, if it is doing social good, uh, following an ESG uh, governance structure and process, I mean, at the end of the day, people pursue their self-interest. They want return, right? So if they can get almost as good a return, giving up a little bit maybe, um, is that what they want? Yeah, you know, there's so many factors here. I, I, I just think the bottom line is, as you, you said very well, people want to do good. So they, you know, they are willing to listen if uh, somebody kind of grabs them their attention and says, hey, you've got all these investments. Are you sure that they are directed toward um, companies that are, are um, aligned with your values and doing the things you want in the world as opposed to if you have no idea what they're doing? Oh, yeah, maybe I should look at that. But um, first of all, getting their attention, who's, who's speaking to them and how do they act on that? It's, it's, you know, it's complicated to go into your portfolio and move things around, especially if you have funds. So I, I just think over and over again, looking at this data, that th what this is saying to the investment world is these things can happen at the institutional level. Your company's 401k can put ESG funds into you know, the basket of things available to your employees and they and educate them and they'll be open to it and they might applaud you for it. But I don't see this bubbling up from the ground up. I don't see investors. I mean, there are a few, like you look at our data, there is a small segment of investors who are hot on this. And they are vocal, and you're going to see them online. You're going to hear them, you know, in, in you know, investment houses are going to hear from them, and financial advisors. Those people are there, but that's it's not like spreading like wildfire to all investors. Um, yeah. There's just too much inertia in, in the way, and 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 noise out there in the world of things people have to pay attention to, and priorities that people have to weigh. So I, I just see this as coming more from top down, but people investors are going to be receptive to it. Yeah, I, I, I go back to what you said in the first segment, the set it and forget it mentality. And look, we've had self-directed brokerage accounts in, in retirement plans. Those have under 5% usage. The target date fund, uh, since the passage of the Pension Protection Act, Lydia, has had, you know, garners the majority of contributions into these plans and assets. I think you're right. It's going to take some time. But, you know, uh, as you know, working for Gallup, because you guys do a lot of different polling, opinions change uh, over time. Yeah, they sure do. And uh, priorities change. Uh, what we're seeing happening in the world now, you know, may certainly focus more people on where their investments are, because we're hearing a lot about that right now. And, uh, you know, that could certainly s snowball. So that's why we keep polling. We don't stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll and, and to that end, what 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 can we expect? And, and you mentioned what's happening in the Ukraine um, and, and, and the sanctions going on uh, of Russia and Russian companies. And you, we, we've talked about this with, uh, with pension funds and other big pools of assets saying, OK, I'm not going to invest here. Um, what about rising inflation, um, gas prices, other things? I mean, do you think that that will color the next round of research that you all do on this particular topic? 
Um, well, we, we have a poll going into the field this week, just started yesterday. It's our annual environment poll uh, that has quite a few trends on environmental concerns, but also energy, people's, you know, weighing the, weighing the uh, priority of uh, environmental protection versus energy independence. Like, and, and for the past few years, Americans have been much more um, interested in protecting the environment, overgrowing the economy when you pit it as an either or. Um, and so what's happening this in the past year with gas prices, inflation, and now uh, this, this uh, war that we get to watch on TV for the moment, um, you know, it could certainly shake people into thinking, gee, maybe we need to shift our priority back to energy uh, independence. And so yeah. we're eager to see what those numbers look like. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. And, and look, I, I really appreciate you coming on the show. This is really, really fascinating stuff. I'd love to hear what the American people think about around investing in other things. And Lydia, we, we look forward to having you back on the program again very soon. Thank you. You're, you're great to bring this data out to the public. That wraps up this episode of BRNAM. Have a topic of interest, someone you think we should talk to, and drop us a line. And don't forget, for all the latest curated news in lifestyle, wellness, finance, tech, so much more, check out today's edition of our daily newsletter, The Morning Pulse. Want to see our latest content? Search our archives. We'll check out our website. That's www.broadcastretirementnetwork.com and our streaming partners like Amazon, Roku, Samsung, over 100 more. We're back again tomorrow. Until then, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe, keep on saving, and don't forget, roll with the changes. Now is your opportunity to co-create content around any topic on the first lifestyle and wellness network. Reach a global audience through our platform and co-own exclusive branded content. All of our programs are available on demand and also as audio only podcasts so you can take us on the go. Broadcast Retirement Network, available anytime, anywhere, and on any device. Are you being audited? And do you owe the IRS $10,000 or more in back taxes? Is the IRS threatening to take more of your money? Don't fight the IRS alone. The Tax Doctor is here to help you negotiate your tax bill and reduce your stress. The IRS can freeze your assets and seize your bank accounts, but you can stop these IRS actions. The Tax Doctor will work with you using our years of experience to represent your case to help you get the best resolution under the IRS guidelines. Help is here to deal with the IRS to reduce your stress. We've handled thousands of cases, so we know what we're doing. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes, do not call the IRS alone. Call a Tax Doctor now for a tax emergency analysis. Call 800-224-6439.